Provide. Senator Patrick. No, thank you, Mr Acting Deputy President. Um, uh, Senator Alliance uh, is a supporter of fair trade. I need to state that up front. However, we do not support the, the agreement in its current form. It contains some cancers that must be cut out of it. As such, we won't be supporting the enabling legislation unless one of the amendments uh, that, uh, that I have moved or that I've um, uh, circulated uh, is passed. There are a number of downsides to this, uh, this agreement, uh, two of particular concern. My uh, colleague, uh, Senator Griff, will uh, raise some other uh, aspects of the agreement that need to be thought about as well uh, in his uh, speech a little bit later. The first one I'd like to talk about is ISDS. Now, as we heard, Senator Carr stood up in the chamber and uh, made some very, very, very good points about ISDS and why uh, we should remove that from, these, uh, from this agreement. In fact, Senator Hanson Young also stood and uh, laid out some uh, cases whereby uh, countries have uh, been subjected to, uh, to uh, litigation. Uh, for changing public policy. So I won't repeat that. Um, I also note that uh, um, you know, Senator Carr pointed out that the Productivity Commission, uh, a pretty sort of uh, uh, rigorous uh, and thoughtful body, has also indicated that it's, uh, it finds ISDS uh, uh, a little bit disturbing. And uh, I note that the Europeans are walking away from it. Once again, Senator Hanson Young pointed that out in her uh, speech, and I might point out uh, uh, that uh, the United States in NAFTA have now walked away from ISDS. So, we, whilst we're walking towards this uh, uh, particular uh, set of provisions, uh, most are walking away. We've, we, of course, have had our own experience with ISDS when uh, Philip Morris having uh, failed to overturn legislation uh, in relation to plain tobacco packaging, uh, having failed to have that overturned in our highest court, simply went to Hong Kong and initiated an action against the Australian government. And thankfully, and I support the Australian government in their, uh, in their def defending of the matter, but nonetheless, uh, we've, that uh, particular ISDS um, litigation cost the Australian taxpayer $39 million. Now, the government wasn't up front in providing uh, me with those details. Sen former Senator Xenophon and myself fought uh, uh, for a couple of years to get access to, to, uh, to how much had been spent. Uh, such was the government's embarrassment. Uh, it went all the way to the AAT and finally the, uh, the government realised they, they, they were going to lose the, uh, the exemption case and, and we, uh, the, the number was revealed—$39 million. We need to understand that what ISDS does is, is it allows uh, corporations to, to sue governments should they uh, be affected by a change in public policy. Uh, in effect, what it does is it transfers what we typically know as sovereign risk from the, uh, from the corporation to the taxpayer, and that's, uh, that's totally unacceptable. And it's an interesting point that Australian companies can't use those provisions here in Australia. Okay, so in some sense, it, uh, it, it even discriminates against corporations that may wish to invest here. Uh, they have no recourse other than uh, uh, through, our, through our court systems. The second area of uh, problem with the current arrangements is labour market testing. It's been waived. We have uh, a situation where we can, uh, we can uh, uh, see foreign companies bring in workers. They don't have to test the local market to see if there's an Australian here that can do the job. They can simply bring those workers in and uh, there's, there's not much we can do about it. Um, so there's uh, countries. Uh, 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 where we could find workers coming from Canada, Peru, Brunei, Mexico, Malaysia and Vietnam. So it's, a, it's an assault on Australian workers. Now in terms of benefits, because I, you know, I don't want to be uh, completely negative here, there are some benefits, uh, always look to the benefits, but in this case, the best case 
uh, is a modest gain, if anything at all. 0.5 per cent of GDP over the next 12 years will be the gain. That's uh, according to the John Hopkins University. Now we must remember that the Productivity Commission has looked at uh, some of these uh, uh, estimates in the past and found them to be somewhat exaggerated. They actually don't live up to what, uh, uh, what, what, what is claimed initially. So we've been able to, to measure that empirically. Spin is, um, has been indicated to me by Senator Wish Wilson. Um, and of course, as has been mentioned by a number of speakers, no independent modelling commissioned by the Australian government focusing on the national advantages and disadvantages for you know, Australia in particular. We're relying on an international uh, analysis. Uh, I too, like Senator Carr, we would like to know where Senator Birmingham got his numbers from when he uh, made his statements to the media uh, this morning or yesterday. I was almost going to stand up and simply repeat Senator Carr's um, speech because he, he uh, clearly articulated uh, the problems with ISDS provisions being in there and labour market testing having been waived. But unfortunately, his speech came, uh, comes to a different ending than mine. The Labor Party still intends to support this. They're crying wolf on these provisions. They're saying they're bad, we don't want them in there, but given the opportunity to get rid of them, they're simply not. Their plan is to change things when they get into government. Firstly, I think that's arrogant. Maybe they won't get into government after the next election. Their modus operandi is now to let everything go through and just wait until they get into government. I suspect we'll see that hopefully with uh, every other piece of legislation. Is that how it works, I wonder? So once again, there's no guarantee that they will gain government, and uh, if that is the case, then uh, you've, you've definitely sold people out. Now, I acknowledge that a private member's bill was introduced uh, into this chamber today by Senator Carr, but the reality is, and we all know this, this private member's bill will sit in the Senate. It will be parked here. It's not like an amendment such as the one that uh, I'll move in committee stage, the, the amendments I'll move in committee stage, um, that is attached to a government bill that has to go back to the House of Reps and has to be voted on there. This is a private member's bill that will simply sit in this chamber. So in that sense, the Labor Party are committing a fraud on their union comrades. They're committing a fraud on their constituent base. I'll just read uh, what uh, Sally McManus uh, has said, the uh, president of the ACTU. She says that uh, uh, she finds it uh, disappointing, or she's disappointed by the ALP's decision to vote for the TPP enabling legislation. Alan Hicks, the ETU national secretary, says it begs belief that Labor caucus would sign off on ratifying the TPP given it's against the party's own policy. The TPP-11 is a disaster for Australian workers. I'll repeat that. The TPP-11 is a disaster for Australian workers. Even if you wanted um, the, the, uh, the TPP to pass today because you really want it to come into effect, um, the funny thing is you simply haven't used your negotiating position here. You've got the numbers. With uh, Pauline Hanson's One Nation and the Greens and Centre Alliance voting against uh, the enabling legislation, you sit in the box seat. You could have a conversation with government and you could work to get to a better situation. Have you done that? No. You've simply come into the chamber, you've uh, moved a private member's bill, uh, you've said a few things but you're not acting on it. I will be moving a uh, commencement uh, amendment, which means that uh, if, if that is successful, the uh, treaty won't come into force. In fact, it, the, the, the 
the, the effect of the amendment will be that uh, uh, it, it won't come into force until such time as ISDS has been removed and that labour market testing has been restored. It wouldn't require another vote of the parliament simply uh, once those are, are removed, those two cancers, then uh, the agreement could come into effect. In the event that that fails, I'm moving a sunset provision. Now that will allow the treaty to come into effect right now, as soon as uh, as soon as the parliament uh, has uh, has signed off on uh, on the enabling legislation. That the Australian government will be able to notify all of the countries involved in the TPP, and uh, it could come into force. But then have the enabling legislation sunsetting. Uh, at the end of next year. Now that's absolutely consistent with what the Labor Party want to do. The Labor Party want to uh, allow this through. Uh, they've stated that they then wish to negotiate uh, the ISDS provisions out and the uh, labour market testing back in. So I'd be very interested to see if Labor supports that because that's what they've said outside this chamber. They intend to do. They intend to. Uh, uh, allow this uh, uh, agreement to come into force and then negotiate these, uh, these uh, bad provisions out. And uh, the nice thing about that is, is it provides an insurance in the event that Labor don't get into government after the next election. The sunset provision will, the, the clause will sit there and it will provide an insurance that will uh, allow uh, for the Labor Party national policy uh, platform to be implemented. So, in closing, um, Madam Acting Deputy President, what needs to happen here is uh, uh, Bill Shorten needs to stand up and show the courage of his conviction. We have an opportunity to draw a line in the sand. We have an opportunity to send a signal to DFAT and uh, uh, th those that uh, are involved in these negotiations that Australia that will not accept ISDS provisions anymore and that we do require labour market testing. Time and time again these uh, agreements uh, uh, are negotiated and the enabling legislation comes before the parliament and time and time again the Labor Party complain about the, uh, the provisions and nothing happens. This time around you have the numbers. This time around with the Greens, with Pauline Hanson's One Nation and with Centre Alliance, if you vote uh, against the TPP as it stands, it will not come into effect. There's some very sensible, measured, reasonable amendments that I've put forward. That Senator Alliance has put forward. Uh, there are some other amendments that, are, uh, that have also been uh, uh, circulated today. It's an opportunity, and uh, it really is uh, going to be a situation where we will see whether, you know, what uh, what colours Labor really stand for. Thank you.